struggling with a rare disease diagnosis of her young son, Charmaine experienced challenges that led to a miraculous treatment that's made a magnificent change for her son and many others. As we're all more connected to ourselves, yeah. we're operating from a place of alignment and integrity yeah. and peace yes. and love because you're now connected to you and you're connected yes. to love. How people are in their lives changes. They're different with their yeah. spouse. They're different with their kids. They're different at work. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a, a husband was like saying to his wife, you know, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And yeah. now he comes, and yeah. so it's you know, it's yeah. really fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fun to watch people have an access that. Um, without years of therapy, without years of trying yeah. to dig at this stuff, it yeah. just comes up and then it dissipates. Yeah. Welcome everyone to the Pollinating the Planet with Love show. I'm your host, Beth Bell, and we're here to talk about the life journey lessons and those pearls of wisdom that we learn along the way. I'd like to introduce today's guest. Charmaine Hayworth grew up living in Africa, Pakistan, Indonesia, the UK, Thailand, and currently lives in San Diego. She discovered at an early age that the same fears and challenges affect human beings all over the world. Her clients love her insights, her playful, calming presence, and the powerful methods she uses to guide them in letting go of old beliefs and unlocking the secrets to honoring themselves and living powerfully. Wow, wonderful. Welcome. <laughs> I can't wait to learn more. Thank you. Yeah, Thank lovely you. to have you here. I always like to start out by asking, what did you think you were going to be as a little girl? And are you doing that now? You know, uh, that's actually a question that I ask most of my clients. Oh, So that's okay. a perfect question. I wanted to be an air hostess. Um, having lived in Is that a flight attendant? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. I like that would air be the British thing. better. Yes. Um, okay. So growing up in all of these countries, Pan Am was mm -hmm. um, a major airline that we would fly, and the Pan Am air stewardesses would walk past in the airport, and they were so mm. perfectly put together, yes. and they looked so glamorous, and they were being paid to travel all over the world, right. and uh, they got invited to the best parties in all the places that they were in, and it just seemed like this really extraordinary life, you know, yeah. and everybody respected and honored them. You know, there was kind of this aura, hushed aura as they would walk past in the airport. Yeah. Um, that just felt really good. And yeah. the idea of being paid to travel and... Yeah, well, uh, and you have been traveling a lot yourself as a child, it yes. sounds, because you've lived in so many different places. Yeah, I was born in Africa in a country called Zambia. Okay. And, um, you know, I lived there until I was seven, so it was really, it was home for me. Right. And then when we were seven, well, when I was seven, my parents um, decided that it, it was time to leave Zambia. Okay. And most of my family went down to South Africa, but my dad said, you know what, we need to, a completely new change, you know, life. Right. And we immigrated to England. Wow. Which and your parents are originally from? Uh, so my mom is, was born in Rhodesia, okay. and my dad was born in Scotland. Okay. And his parents okay. emigrated to Rhodesia okay. after the Second World War. Yeah. Um, I was trying to detect your accent, but I think with all the places that you've lived and places. having the parents that you have, yeah, there's yes. a, a very And boarding unique. school in England, okay. um, university in Scotland. Okay. So a yes. plethora of accents, I yes. think, show up in, yes. in there. Um, but so we got to England, and it was cold okay. and wet and mm. miserable mm. and um, yeah, after not about quite the mm, weather you're used to yeah not what I was used to and uh, after about three months my parents said no we're done this we got to go somewhere oh. else and so my dad went into the head office in London and said send me somewhere else okay. and they said why of course we have a spot in Pakistan how does that <laughs> sound <laughs> so um, he went off to Pakistan we followed a few months later at the end of the school term Wow. and we lived in Pakistan for three years Okay. which was an extraordinary experience. Did you feel um, safe? Was it safe at the time? Or? I don't know that I'd want to live there now, but yes. at the time this was the, the late 70s, sure. early 80s, okay. and so it was a different world. I yeah. think there were about 30 expatriate families that lived in Karachi, so it was mm -hmm. a really close-knit community. Mm -hmm. um, we found that it was safer to wear the shawa kameez, okay. and so we did that. Okay. Um, there were definitely some uh, interesting incidents of being held up at gunpoint by 14-year-olds with sawn off, you know, homemade shotguns up in the foothills of the Himalayas. That um, happened to you? Yes, yes, wow. yes, okay. yes. So, uh, but I think most of the time we, I, I loved living in Pakistan as a kid. It was really fun and yeah. uh, I loved the colors and the, 
um, the passion with which people lived in their yeah. lives. The, the Pakistani weddings were beautiful. Mm. The brides were so, yeah. I mean, they just looked so gorgeous. Yeah. Kind of harkens back to that, the glamour of the, yes. the air stewardesses. Yeah. And so, um, something about being in that space of being powerful and feminine, mm -hmm. um, which has kind of been a dance that I've played with, I think, my whole life. Yeah. So how do so you do that? So uh, now I'm curious, what was your first job then? I mean, you, you've had all these very interesting life experiences and then also observationally thought that being a, you know, a flight hostess, is that, no, air, air, air hostess, hostess <laughs> would be, yeah, would be the, the thing to do. So what did you actually then end up doing? So um, I always had a passion for fashion design. Okay. And when I told my dad that I wanted to be a fashion designer, mm -hmm. um, he said, I don't want you starving in an attic in Paris. So go and do a business degree first. Yes. So after I left boarding school in England, I went okay. up to Scotland, to Glasgow, and did a business degree at Strathclyde University. Okay. And then um, he said, you know, and if you do your business degree, then I'll pay for you to do a fashion design degree. Oh, so okay. my last week of my business degree, I happened to be in a, in a lift, an elevator, mm -hmm. um, and um, heard two girls talking about a new fashion course that had started uh, in, oh, wow. in, in Glasgow. Yeah. And um, they were looking for people to go into different years. Okay. Uh, and so I took down all the information before cell phones and everything yeah. and uh, called the number and said, you know, I have this business degree. and. Um, I've been making clothes because we'd lived in all these different countries. Um, my mom would, she would make our clothes, okay. and then I would take the scraps and make clothes for my dolls. Oh wow! And uh, um, I wasn't allowed a Barbie doll. I had to have a Cindy doll, which was the British equivalent. Okay. She had smaller boobs oh. um, <laughs> and probably a more realistic waist. <laughs> yes. More realistic okay. waist, not legs, not quite so long. Yeah. Um, and so I would make clothes for her, and I was just always fascinated about how clothes could. Um, alter how someone looked mm. and felt yeah. and so kind of in this vein of being you know a, a powerful and feminine woman wearing clothes actually yeah. can enhance that feeling right. or detract from it if, if you yes. know if you're trying to hide in your clothes yes um, and so uh, I got myself into this fashion design degree and called my dad and said, guess what? <laughs> I'm doing this fashion design yeah. degree now. I think he was a bit surprised. I think I'm he sure thought he was, I would yeah. uh, go into business after that. Yeah. And so uh, in five years, I had two degrees. And uh, at the end of that, I realized that I really wanted to go. Uh, my parents were living in Thailand by that point. Okay. And I really wanted to go out to Thailand and kind of get to know my parents because I'd been at boarding school for so long since I was nine. Right. And then I um, had been at university for five years. And so right. I was like, who are my parents? <laughs> and so um, I got myself a job um, at one of my dad's friend's companies. He was a genius when it came to uh, computers, but didn't really have people skills. Mm -hmm. And so um, I helped him set up his marketing department. Okay. And you uh, brought all the people skills. Brought yes. the people skills and um, ended up working out in Thailand. Uh, had a great time yeah. doing that and then ended up working for an Australian company kind of in the glamorous mm -hmm. air hostessy type role it was a, a serviced office company and um, we uh, so coming into Thailand as a new business it would take a year to get a telephone line okay and so these serviced offices, we would provide you with a secretary who actually spoke English, yeah. a telephone line, and an office, a beautiful okay. office, yeah. where you could meet potential clients in this new country and give yourself yeah. a chance to set everything up. It's probably and so progressive back then. Yeah, yeah, very much so, yeah. yeah. Um, and so the requirement was to, you know, look feminine and powerful, kind of yeah. in the in the vein of these Pan Am yeah, air stewardesses. Isn't it? And so it was interesting. I whilst I didn't become that, I did travel and I was running an Australian company in, in yeah. Bangkok. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then I married an American, came here, okay. um, had a baby, mm. uh, and um, when I got here, uh, I was in a, a very abusive mm. marriage. And um, when I got here, I realized pretty quickly that I was going to need to find a source of income yeah. to provide for myself and my son. Yeah. And I ended up meeting a lady who had an interior design business and within a week of being in the States. And she said, you know, I really want you to come and work with me. Mm. She heard my background and she was like, you, I yeah. want you. Yeah. And so I went and worked for her. And after about three weeks, she said, you're going to buy my business. I'm going to sell it to you as if you were my daughter. 
And, and how did you feel about that? Did well, that I think my right first away? response was, I don't even know how I'm going to make that happen. Yeah. Um, and then we did. And I paid it off in three years and tripled the size of the business. And uh, one day I got a, a phone call from the bank manager who said, you know, I've watched your business yeah. grow. You've, you're, you're never overdrawn. You manage your finances really well. We want to lend you some money. We want you to open a factory. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. let's make this thing big. Yeah. And I panicked. Absolutely this complete panic washed over me. Uh. Uh, I felt completely ill-equipped to be able oh to no. do that. Um, all the feelings of um, not being smart yeah. enough, you know, yeah. uh, able to do the finances for a big business. I mean, yeah. how was I going to do this? Yeah. And I panicked and literally called all my clients and told them I wasn't doing the business anymore. Oh, wow. And it, so it Well, was I just love these moments in life because they're big moments. Yeah. And I want to hear more about it, but we're going to go to a quick break yes. and be right back. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Blossom Bliss products are designed to help empower pure love and purpose in your life. It's through the power of words, flowers, and symbols that our products assist you in creating a blissful life. The power of words in our mini mantra word bar necklaces assist you in setting and blossoming your personal intentions. The affirmation cards leverage the power of flowers by providing daily inspiration. And the power of symbols in our life journey bracelets are great reminders of the things that bring us peace, joy, and love. Products are made and blessed in Bali with love by Balinese artisans who work with empowered hearts. When you purchase jewelry with a bee charm, we donate to save the bees. Join us in pollinating the planet with love. Go to our website, BlossomBlissBally.com. Again, that's BlossomBlissBally.com. We're back with Charmaine Hayworth, and we were just talking about a time in your life when you had a little bit of, I don't know if you used the word anxiety, but it seemed like something really big was coming for you. Yeah. And I want to hear more about that because actually in, a, in an interview earlier today, someone said, if you don't have fear, you're not dreaming big enough. So it feels like this was a big one for you and you called everyone and said, I'm not doing this. But yes. then what happened? So um, I made the business really, really small and I, I got that there was something in me yeah. that I didn't know how to move through. And I could spend my life getting myself really big and then you know, collapsing mm -hmm. it, yeah. um, or I could actually find out what was really going on yeah. and, and you know, make something really yes, big. explore it. So I started doing a whole bunch of different personal development work. Um, at the same time, I was in a new relationship, a new marriage, actually, okay. and um, was realizing that there were some dynamics around being male and female where communication mm. was really challenging. Mm. And um, I, I uh, found a book by a lady called Alison Armstrong okay. and ended up studying with her actually for the next 12 years. Uh, all in her passion is creating peace between men and women. Mm -hmm. And so she has, you know, wonderful courses and books yeah. and programs and things that, that are about that. And I did her year long mentorship program, okay. uh, which would have then allowed me if I'd been interested in uh, working with her company. But I realized there was something bigger than that. Yeah. So I, I kept the interior design business little, yeah. but I just I kept it. Yeah. And um, I was praying one day and I just said, you know, what am I supposed to do? I have this fashion design background. I have this interior design okay. business. I have all this. I also studied a, the Tony Robbins and Chloe Madonna's coach training. Okay. So I have this coaching and yeah. relationship understanding. Yes. What do I do with it? And just as I was kind of really in this inquiry, my phone yeah. rang and it was a, a lady who I was on the PTA at my son's school with. And she said, I know you have this fashion background. I know you have this coaching background. Yeah. I know you have an interior design background. Can you come and do those three things okay. with me for the next six months? Amazing. And it was beautiful. So she was going to pay yeah. me for that as well. Yeah. And uh, I worked with her for six yeah. months and transformed her life. Yeah. Um, and I, I got hooked by this, um, this ability to be able to move someone else to live their life 
fully. Yeah. As well as me, right? Yeah. Having yeah. done that for myself too. And uh, so it just kind of took off from there. I wow. was asked to speak at events and it just. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to, I also want to highlight something because you, it's a real pearl of wisdom, I think, a takeaway for everyone. Um, you've now talked about two different occasions where you've basically asked a question out there. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in, I need to have a plan. I need to figure out what the steps are. And what I'm hearing you say is you really got into that magic of just surrendering, asking a big question. I didn't even hear you say like, how do I, you just said, how does, you know, how can this, how, 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 in a much bigger way that then allowed the universe to just bring it right to you. And, and in multiple situations, yes. you've described something just really showed up. Right. Yeah. And so I think it sounds like you're good at getting yourself out of the way. Thank Which you. is, yeah. Uh, I, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so now you've yeah. recognized that you actually can help shift other people. Yeah. And that's starting to really get to you. Now, one other thing that got mentioned in your upfront intro was there, it sounded like there were some common threads that you observed as you've lived around the world. What were those common threads of humanity that you felt um, you were observing? So I think, you know, as a woman, I was looking mostly at women around the world, but yeah. also um, at how men are too. And what I saw was that across cultures, yeah. there is, there can be in cultures, a thread of men have all the power, mm -hmm. women mm. don't get to say what they want. Okay. Their voice isn't really heard. And the women that do try and have a voice are often ostracized or, um, or, uh, diminished in some okay. in some way and I you know growing up in boarding school one of the things that we were told in the when we turned 16 we were allowed to wear our own clothes and the boys were told to dress as if they ran a business mm -hmm. and the girls were told to dress as if they were secretaries and something in that jarred for me but I didn't really have a yeah. sense of what it was that, it yeah. just didn't seem yeah. fair didn't and then as I went out you know to all these different countries I saw it in, in a different in a different way, but just as powerful that you know men got to have the say. Men were mostly in positions of government, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and women just kind of had to deal with what was going on. Mm -hmm. But women were the mothers, the the keepers of the community, yeah. and and with themselves they had a power. Mm -hmm. But you know, in in some of the Muslim countries I I lived in, you know, women would have to wear a veil. Yes. Like you couldn't even be Fully seen yes. unless it was by your husband. Yeah. Um, when we lived in Pakistan, one of the things that did happen, and the reason that we started wearing the shawar kameez, is that we would be in the marketplace and be pinched or um, hurt in some way. Yeah. And uh, again, was there it, intention to hurt you, or it was just to connect with you in a, in a, in a way? I think you know, um, being a white woman. Yeah. Um, oftentimes in different countries around the world, um, women are not considered to be very high value, yes. but as a white woman, you're also um, considered to be loose or promiscuous or whatever, which adds insult to injury. Okay. And so um, there was a lot in my experience around women not having power. Okay. And um, so as I was doing all these coaching programs, it really became a passion of mine to change the way that we see men and women and to value mm. value what women bring to the yeah. table in a way that I hadn't seen really be yeah. done before. Yeah. Um, and so uh, fast forward a number of years, um, I now have Eighth Harmony. Um, you know, our passion there is to bring people home to themselves, themselves yeah. being their own power, their own voice, you know, taking mm -hmm. up the space that, that they need to take up yeah. in the world without apologizing for right. that. And so we do work with a lot of people, actually both men and women, okay. who are learning how to stand in their own space. Yeah. Um, and. Um, and then not move from that out to really living their passions and yeah. their dreams and living fully. If we're going to be alive, yeah. let's live. Yeah, you know? <laughs> live fully. Really live. Well, and I'm sure that from the time that you had this aha moment with this woman that you helped support and shift to now, there's probably been a number of, um, I don't know if I would say fears, because you came across some other big things. So 
I want to hear more about those and how you were able to push through, maneuver through that. Um, yeah. But we're going to go to another quick break and we'll be right back. Perfect. Blossom Bliss products are designed to help empower pure love and purpose in your life. It's through the power of words, flowers, and symbols that our products assist you in creating a blissful life. The power of words in our mini mantra word bar necklaces assist you in setting and blossoming your personal intentions. The affirmation cards leverage the power of flowers by providing daily inspiration. And the power of symbols in our life journey bracelets are great reminders of the things that bring us peace, joy, and love. Products are made and blessed in Bali with love by Balinese artisans who work with empowered hearts. When you purchase jewelry with a bee charm, we donate to save the bees. Join us in pollinating the planet with love. Go to our website, BlossomBlissBally.com. Again, that's BlossomBlissBally.com. I'm with Charmaine Hayworth, and we were talking about a shift you are encountering now, you know, really seeing the value that you bring to helping others come back home. Yes. Um, and... So you somehow decide that you're going to start another business, and it's called Eighth Harmony. But take yes. us back just before that all happens. Like, what are the maybe intuitive hits that you're getting? Like, how did you come across this? How did you decide to, like, yes, we're going to do this? And what did you have to really work through to get it done? Perfect. <laughs> yes, that is quite a journey. Yeah. Um, when my son was eight, he was diagnosed, he actually, it's his 20th birthday today. Oh my goodness. So it was a while ago. But when he was eight, he was diagnosed with a very rare disease that affects his uh, sight and his hearing. Okay. And the prognosis we were given was that by the age of 18, he would most likely be blind and profoundly hard of hearing. And um, I remember thinking, and that Western medicine had nothing that it could offer in right. this, that I was just going to, as his mother, have to sit by and watch this happen to him. Okay, I'm sure that and, didn't uh, sit well with you. No, <laughs> not an option. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, my mother was actually diagnosed with the same disease on the same day uh, in Thailand, the other side of the world. Same disease, same day. Same disease, day. same day. <clears throat> um, it had, I think, recently been um, created, I think, as a, as a disease. Identified, yes. Identified, okay. exactly. And there was no real research being done into it. And there was I, no hope. Right. And so we, we found a, um, a, a... And did the Eastern medicine in Thailand also say the same thing for prognosis um, it, and treatment? My parents were not going to Eastern medicine. Okay. They were going to a Western okay. hospital. And okay. it was the same prognosis. Okay. And uh, we were sent to a support group for people with this disease. And after the first, um, the first visit, I guess, mm -hmm. or the first mm -hmm. meeting, um, both my son and I decided that we would never go again. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think when you have a group of people who has no hope, it's very difficult to climb out of that yeah. to hope or to yeah. bring a whole group of people into hope. Yeah. And um, well, and I think then you s can, in some cases, start to identify with that story and ingrain that story, which is not yes. helping to rewrite the story. Yes. Yes. Yes, exactly. And so we spent the next X number of years trying everything we could think yeah. of, Eastern medicine, acupuncture, um, all the coaching, suddenly all the coaching training that I had done came into play. And um, I just was determined that if this was the way it was gonna go, mm -hmm. that he was gonna live fully, mm -hmm. that he was really gonna have a life yeah. um, filled with extraordinary experiences while he could still see. Right. So um, we ended up taking him out of school, and I homeschooled him and ran my businesses. Okay. And um, we traveled, uh, you know, have kid will lot, travel, yes. <laughs> and uh, did did you know homeschool? Thank goodness for Google Drive and the ability to yeah. write essays and have a teacher mark them in a different yeah. country. And um, so we just, you know, we just lived life fully, yeah. and um, we did all kinds of things that he wanted to do and that I wanted to do, and we just played this game of what if you could have an extraordinary life and yeah. have something that was incurable. Yeah. And our very first conversation was about my son and, and his disease because that was kind of prominent at the time. And, um, and he said I needed to get him into this resonance therapy chamber that mm. he knew about. 
and that he had seen extraordinary things happen with people okay. that had been through it. Right. I'd never even heard of resonance therapy. Yeah. Um, and there wasn't one of these chambers in San Diego. Okay. And so um, kind of how it goes is I'm going to go and try something out first before you're allowed to do it to my kid. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, I get that. Yes. <laughs> um, especially given you know yeah. the, his circumstances. So I went up to Orange County uh, where the head office is and tried out this Kay. machine and um, vessel I should say and, um, and w had an extraordinary emotional out uh, some really old stuff came yeah. up for me around being sent to boarding school, about not getting to have a say, mm -hmm. and um, and this anger just erupted out of me in a way that I was yeah. shocked by. Yeah. And uh, and how do you think that the the chamber chamber did that? Jolts <laughs> so this um, out of your. System body. I'm I'm saying body because I'm yes. thinking that you're you know really working at a cellular level and yes. there's you know things percolating that are up for observation and release. Yes, yes. Um, so I, I have a girlfriend who is a Chinese medicine therapist, okay. and she said she actually came and used the chamber uh, last week, and she said, you know, Charmaine, this is how I think it works from a Chinese medicine perspective. Okay. If everything is about purging and tonifying, so yes. letting go of something and bringing yes. something new in, then what the chamber does is it combines sound and light and heat is it creates a frequency that um, the sound produces a vibration that moves through your body and it shakes loose mm. anything any st anything stagnant or, or stuck yes. and then the light and the 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 music is very relaxing yes. that um, comes in and, and replaces what yeah. has been purged and it so seems like it must distract your mind so that your mind because your mind is holding making everything so sticky in there yes. on a cellular level. So yes. somehow, yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay. So it's FDA approved or cleared for relaxation, okay. and that's exactly what it does. Okay. Um, and there seem to be some, some side benefits. So it sounds like it's very different than like a hypnotherapy. Yes. But that it might be a more hypnotic state in the sense of relaxation. Would that yes. be fair to say? Or? Yes, okay. and we actually have hypnotherapists that send their clients to us okay. for sessions in okay. the chamber yeah. when there's something that they can't quite get to. It so probably helps loosen, release, yes. relax at another yes. level. Okay. We had um, a young lady who came and did sessions with us and she um, for five years had had stomach pain. Mm. And you know she'd been seeing this hypnotherapist, and the hypnotherapist just couldn't couldn't yeah. get to what it was. I think it was her second uh, second session in okay. the chamber, and she came out and she said, "I had a vision when I was in there, and the vision was there was a demon, and as the vision went yes. on, um, and the demon had its hands in her yeah. stomach, yeah. and as the vision went on, she realized that she." was the demon and she had her own hands in her stomach yes. so she took them out yes within a really short period of time her she stomach pains were gone from a 10 to a 1 or a 2 yeah. and as the sessions went on she had her first pain free day in 5 years oh, isn't that so. such a great story oh my gosh it just gives me chills but i want to go back to your story because yes. so your first session you have this incredible experience I wouldn't have said it was incredible okay. at the time. I had no, no one had prepared me that that might be. To have that kind of a release. That yeah, kind of release would happen. Yeah. And in fact, I had been to therapists and, you know, done all kinds of work around mm. letting go, anything yeah. around my, you know, my yeah. history. And um, I, I was really unprepared okay. for that. So now we're really careful to warn people that between your second and third sessions, if there's something that's unresolved, it might come up and it we might hope not it comes look up. pretty. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it might not look very yeah. pretty, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Um and so uh, and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. Um but uh I, I came away and I and I really at first I was like, I hate that thing, I'm never going in it again. And um and then given all the work that I've done, all the training that I've had, it was like, Oh, okay, let's just step back a second. Yeah. Look at what really happened here. Yeah oh my gosh, this thing is powerful. Yeah. And if it can do that for me, 
it can move. Yeah. Whatever is in the way for my son, whatever he's yeah. not letting go of, that's having him literally lose his sight and his hearing. Right. And in the world of epigenetics, if you switch it on, you can turn it back, you know, off. And so maybe, just maybe, this is an access to him not, yeah. you know, going blind and losing his hearing. Right. And if the worst comes to the worst, and that still happens, at least he'll be really relaxed. Yes. You know, he'll actually yes. be able to and take in it in stride. Yes, his inner wisdom in another yeah. way. Exactly. So you get him in for his first session. Yes. And what happens? And he comes out and he says, oh my gosh, for the first time in my life, I feel comfortable in my own skin. Which, as a mom who's watched, you know, mm -hmm. your child go through this. Yeah, well, it makes me feel emotional. <sighs> Okay, yeah. it was worth it. Yeah, it was worth it. Yeah, um, and so, um, so with this with this chamber, you do four sessions, and then you wait yeah. three weeks, and then okay. you do four sessions, okay. and wait three weeks. And so, do but this four was sessions. after the first session. This was he the says first this. session, and then he's got a few more. So sessions. then he. So what we realized as he was going through all of his sessions was that each little set of four kind of has its own theme. Okay. So he realizes that he's comfortable in his skin for mm -hmm. the first time, and those four just kind of reinforce that. He's more joyful, he's mm. more relaxed, he's himself, but just freer, mm -hmm. almost. In his second session, second set, he, um, he let go of being angry at the world, mm -hmm. which if you've been diagnosed with an incurable disease, get why you would be angry at the world. Yes. Um, in his third set, he, um, his biological father was very abusive, and um, he let go of anger with men, which was really interesting. Um, and obviously around his sessions there was some mm -hmm. coaching, and we do do that with clients that come into Eighth Harmony, yeah. um, but it was really profound. Wow, sounds like it. It was really yeah. profound. And, and each, each subsequent set, um, he's, he's moved into a different right. space to here he is. I, he just finished an, another set of four. And um, this set, he came out of one of his sessions and he said, I get it. I, I get everything. Okay. What do you mean you get yes. everything? <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> and he says, I get it. It's all about love. If we're connected to love, Mm. then nothing else matters. And he was so full of joy and peace mm. and all the things that you would wish for your child, yes. um, and frankly for everybody, right, including me. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I just thought, you know, we have something really precious here. Yeah. Now this is, sounds like a silly question, but could he be undiagnosed? I mean, could he be cured from this disease then? Or was, is there like an, a, a way to undiagnose? I of this. don't know. I mean, what we're doing right now is we have some baseline measurements for his mm -hmm. hearing and his sight. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he was progressively losing he them? He was progressively losing them. Okay. Um, we, he hasn't been tested again yet, but, you know, the hope is that it, at the very worst that it remains yes, stable. stable. Um, and, you know, fingers crossed, mm -hmm. he, uh, he, you know, gets better. I mean, that would be the ultimate yeah, thing for would. me. Yes. Um, and, and I think whether he does or not, his, his being is different. Yeah, that's what I was really feeling as you were saying it, that, um, yeah, that there's a lot more to this than yeah. what meets the eye and yeah. a disease diagnosis. And so yeah. there's a lot more that he's here to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's really powerful. Yeah. He's really powerful. Wow. Wow, and, that's uh, amazing. So, you know, we just keep putting him in. Yeah. Mm, we'll see. Okay. And You've had uh, already many people who have come in and had some magnificent experience. In fact, I was just in your lobby and took the liberty to ask the beautiful young lady sitting there. I said, have you done this before? She said, yes. I said, what's been your experience? And she just kind of gave me one of those, like, you can't really describe this, but it's made a huge, huge difference in my life. Yeah. And, um, yeah, what, what I took away from the comments that she made was that, she's getting her power back yeah and she doesn't yeah. even care if she can explain how what yeah. or why yeah but she's feeling that deep inner wisdom connection and yeah so yeah. that was nice to hear because she yeah. obviously was just random yeah and you know was sitting there at a time when I was waiting for you so 
yeah, the the testimonials are, are definitely there. I'm, I'm How do you see what you're doing at Eighth Harmony help in pollinating the planet with love? So that is an excellent question. <laughs> so I I really see that as we're all more connected to ourselves, yeah. we're operating from a place of alignment and yeah. integrity yeah. and peace yes. and love because you're now connected to you and you're connected yes. to love. That you know. As we, as we grow Eighth Harmony and expand across the world, mm -hmm. um, my parents live in Thailand and they've already requested that one comes to Thailand, yes. so that's where yes. we're going. Um, as these spread around the world and people really live in the space of being connected to themselves, being connected mm -hmm. to love, you can't operate in the same way that you did before yeah. when you have that alignment and yeah. connection. Yeah. And so it's... Um, I think it'll just change the world. I think yeah. it'll change the way people see themselves, yeah. how people see their own power. Yeah. Um, and and when you temper power with love, extraordinary things happen. Yes. And uh, you know there are certainly some world leaders in power right now in many countries around yeah. the world who can use some tempering with love. Yes. Yes. Um, and uh, once you once you impact world leaders. Uh, and people in, in power yeah. all around countries, you change the policies that are in place, you change yeah. how people treat each other, yeah. you change how women are treated, yeah. and, um, and I Fictious. think we, yeah. yeah. Wow. And, and you know, it's a relatively quick and simple process. Yeah. You know, our, we do 12 sessions, and most people do 12 sessions, and then some people continue and do more because yeah. they love the feeling of being relaxed. One, one lady calls it her vacation in a box. Oh, nice. And so yeah. that's really fun. Um, but, but and a lot cheaper. A lot cheaper. A yeah. lot cheaper than therapy. It's, yeah. it's amazing. But, um, but even with 12 sessions, how people are in their lives changes. They're different with their yeah. spouse. They're different with their kids. They're different at work. Yeah. Um, you know, we have a, a husband was like uh, saying to his wife, you know, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And yeah. now he comes. And yeah. so it's, you know, it's yeah. really fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's fun to watch people have an access that um, without years of therapy, without years of trying yeah. to dig at this stuff, it yeah. just comes up and then it dissipates. Yeah. So. Well, we're all about raising the vibration and reconnecting to that inner wisdom. So it sounds like this is not that it's about quick or fast, but it, no. I think some of us do need that inspiration, that empowerment to just get that feeling back. And yeah. so it sounds like that's what, what this really helps people do is to reconnect. Yeah. So that's fabulous. Any final pearls of wisdom to share? Anything we may have missed that we just should be sharing with the world in regards to this? Or your life journey stories and pearls oh, of gosh. You know, I think that we, everybody has their own perfect journey. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have wished what my son has on anyone. Yeah. And, and I really get that it's his perfect journey, yeah. who his dad is, who I am. It was perfectly created for him yes. to become the man he's becoming. Yes. And um, you mentioned earlier um, about surrendering mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's really been my practice is is standing in what I want or what I don't want yes. and then you know asking for, for that yeah. um, and then getting out of the way like the how is not my problem yeah. it's just not my problem is uh, you know is really standing in alignment with what I say I want or mm -hmm. what I say I don't want yeah. letting that go um, but not worrying about the how yeah um, that I think is probably my final pearl of wisdom. Don't yeah. worry about the how, just stand yes, in what you it's want. It's a great pearl. It's a great pearl. Sometimes easier said than done for some people, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. So. Well, and the more connected you are to yourself, yeah. the easier that is. Yes. And I think one of the, the side effects, if you like, of, yeah. of the chamber is that people talk about how they're just unwilling to tolerate the things mm. that they had tolerated in their life before. Yeah. Not from a place of How force beautiful. or, yeah. or you know, uh, but, but from this, this quiet power pl yeah. place yeah. of, you know, I've tolerated that and yeah. I'm just unwilling yeah. to tolerate it Well, anymore. it sounds like that's a testament to their inner power and their yeah. authentic self that they're reconnecting to. So exactly. it's a powerful place to be. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. And until next week, wishing you bliss so that you too can help in pollinating the planet with love.
up next when you like my page, Beth Bell Live, and join me each week as I invite a new guest into the mobile recording studio to help in pollinating the planet with love.